Hello everyone, today we've got another further peer mathematics IGCSE pass paper. This question is from the January, goodness, the January, 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 if it will let me write, January 2012, paper one, question seven, I believe. And in this video, we're going to be going over the whole question. And if I find anything that I want to talk about along the way, then I will. So let's jump into the question as our prompting material. This curve C with equation y is equal to 2x minus 3 over x minus 3. x is not equal to 3. And that's because if x were 3, then you'd be dividing by 0, and the function would be undefined. Crosses the x-axis at the point A and the y-axis at the point B. Find the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B. Well, to find the x and y intercepts of a rational function like this, rational function meaning it's a polynomial divided by another polynomial, generally speaking. That's what rational function means. Although, if I'm not mistaken, the term does include anything which has only fraction outputs. But anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. All the outputs to this function are rational, so it's a rational function, but generally rational function describes this kind of thing. So you want to know the x-axis crossing point, and at the x-axis, y is equal to 0. So if 0 is equal to 2x minus 3 multiplied by 1 over x minus 3, and the reason I'm decomposing the fraction into these two parts is to highlight the fact that this denominator will never be 0, ever. It'll always be 1 divided by some finite amount, or 0. And that means it will never actually reach the number 0. Because for it to do that, the numerator would have to be 0. And that's never happening, so it's a constant 1. However, this term in the function can be 0, which allows the entire function to be equal to 0. So if we let that be equal to 0, 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, 2x is 3, adding 3 to both sides, and then x is 3 over 2, dividing both sides by 2. This gives us the x-coordinate at which the function crosses the x-axis. So if it crosses the x-axis at point A, then we can say the coordinates of point A are 3 over 2, comma, 0, where 0 is, of course, the y-coordinate for this. Being on the x-axis, it's 0 nonetheless and no calculation is needed there. Finally, it crosses the y-axis at the point B. So what does it mean by crossing the y-axis? Well, when something crosses the y-axis, by definition, its x-coordinate is 0. So how do we find the y-coordinate then? Well, you just run the function as if 0 were an input. So let y being equal to 2x minus 3 over x minus 3, take 0 as its input to the function. 2 times 0 minus 3 divided by 0 minus 3. This is 0 and this is 0. Is equal to minus 3 over minus 3, or in other words, 1. So that means the y coordinate at which the x coordinate is 0 is 1. And our y-intercept point has the coordinates 0, 1. So that's how you do part A of the question, fairly trivial compared to the rest as I can see. By the way, if you're new to this channel, if you have any requests for questions for me to do of any kind, not just at Excel for the pure math and not just math or physics any, Way, any kind of video you want me to do, then I'll have a look at it. You just write your suggestion in the comments and I'll respond to you. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we're going to do part B of the question now. Write down an equation of the asymptote to C, which is parallel to the y-axis. Okay, parallel to the y-axis meaning vertically, of course. And uh, vertical lines generally have, or they will always have, some equation in the form x is equal to k, where k is some constant number. And that's because 
if it were a line that involved multiple points and not just a vertical line, then there will be multiple x-coordinates. If you want to allow only one x-coordinate, then of course you write your equation like this, which gives you the vertical line. So how do you find vertical asymptotes of a rational function? Well, you need to look at where the function is undefined, because an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, generally speaking, vertical asymptotes will always have their position at a point where the function is undefined. Not all undefined points will have vertical asymptote, but all vertical asymptotes will be at a point where the function is undefined. And if you are curious about that, then do ask me in the comments. It's generally because a graph can sometimes look like this with an undefined point and not have an asymptote. But by asymptote, of course, we're looking for the place where the graph goes to infinity in some way or another. So in this case, the vertical asymptote is where the denominator is equal to 0. If x minus 3 were 0, then x would be 3. That would be our vertical asymptote. And that is because if you get an x which is like 2.999, 2.999, inching closer and closer and closer to 3, then you'd get a tiny negative number inching closer and closer and closer to zero on the bottom. And that would send your, in our case, that would send your graph all the way to the bottom. So you'd be at like just below three and a very big negative number. And in the other direction, if you had something that was just above three, then the denominator would be a very, very, very tiny positive number. And so you'd get this asymptote um, which would be at the x coordinate greater than 3 and a very big positive number. And so where they go off to infinity is always a vertical asymptote and that's my logic behind using the denominator of a fraction as equal to 0. So x, x is equal to 3 is the vertical asymptote. I'll just write these down so I don't forget later. And parallel to the x-axis being horizontal, well, we want to consider what happens when the function input x goes to a very large number. So the asymptote to see suggests that there is only a single asymptote which is parallel to the x-axis. There may be more in other functions, but at least in this function, it's the asymptote to see. And we can actually investigate that quite well. So say we have some x, or let, let the function have some input k, which is some massive number. And we're going to write this as infinity even though it's not actually infinity, just for the sake of demonstrating my reasoning. So if you have 2 infinity minus 3 over infinity minus 3, and I just need to remind you, it's not infinity, it's just a very large number because the function in reality can't ever go to infinity, as infinity is just a sort of idea of an infinite number. Anyway, 2 times a big number minus 3, well, that's basically no different from 2 times a big number. So we're just going to get rid of the 3 here. And we're going to get rid of the 3 here also because infinity minus 3, big number minus 3 is no different than just the big number. So then this goes to like 2 times the big number divided by the big number, which is 2. And it works the same way even if it's a very big negative number you get back down to the situation where it's two times negative infinity minus negative uh, over negative infinity. They cancel out and your y value gets to approximately two because like I said before, this isn't actual infinity and canceling the minus three here, getting rid of the minus three as if it doesn't exist is only something we can do just because the number is so big and it makes it an approximation, not a real mathematical fact. 
but that's that's sort of why these horizontal asymptotes exist. So parallel to the x-axis, y is equal to 2 is our asymptote here. And now it says sketch C clear, showing clearly the asymptotes and the coordinates of the points A and B. Oh, OK. So for question C, you may end up just using your graphical calculator. This is a 2012 paper, so I'm not actually familiar with whether it allows a graphical calculator. I'm just quickly checking that in the paper's description. It's actually not very clear about, oh, it says calculators may be used. Okay, calculators may be used. Of course you can then bring out your graphical calculator and go to a graphing section where you type in the function here, 2x minus three over x minus three. And I'm just sort of doing this to make sure I get this right the first time. Say you look at an arbitrary point below the asymptote of x equals equal to 3. Say you're looking at 0. And then, of course, that's at 3 over 2, 0. Or that's at 0, 1. So we have our point here, which is b, 0, 1. And our other intercept here, a, which is Zero, uh, 3 over 2, 0. And you'll see in the graphing calculator that there is an asymptote here. And the actual line of the graph goes somewhere like this. Down to negative infinity as it approaches 3. And then, of course, there's our vertical asymptote. And you'll see on the graphing calculator that, again, the line approaching from this side starts above 2. And goes up to a place of positive infinity. And of course, the question asks us to show clearly these asymptotes. So we'll demonstrate that this asymptote has the equation x is equal to 2, x is equal to 3, rather, and that this asymptote has the equation y is equal to 2. And that's our, that's our diagram of it, basically. So that's how you would get your sketch marks, by just following all of the conditions here. I have a note for you. If you ever apply to a top tier university asking you to just sketch a function and they're not very clear about the details of what they want you to sketch at all, a safe bet is always to sketch asymptotes, if any, intercepts, and behavior at the ends, as in, does it go up to infinity, down to infinity, is there an asymptote, whatever. It's, it's safe, better for you to sketch those things in if you uh, want to be extremely sure of all the marks. And last but not least, the actual shape of the graph is also important, obviously. But yeah, if you think it's the kind of exam that would ask you for more details, then asymptotes, intercepts, and ends are a safe list to draw from, pretty much. That's what I think, at least. Um, I myself am training for the physics aptitude test this year because I'm applying to study physics at a top university. And in that kind of test, they do actually ask you to just sort of 
sketch graphs without much explanation as to what they want you to sketch. So that's sort of how I've interpreted it. So finally, D, find an equation of the normal to C at the point B. This is actually a calculus question, and what kind of calculus can we use here? Well, since our function is a rational function, one polynomial divided by another, we can use the quotient rule, which is a rule for differentiating functions that are fractions made from two other functions to find the gradient of the tangent and then find the normal using the negative reciprocal of the tangent gradient. So again, we know the point B is 0, 1, being that y-intercept of the graph. So that means x is 0 at the normal. So how do we go about finding it? Well, the quotient rule states that if you have some function u over v and you differentiate it prime, u over v prime, then u prime v minus u v prime all over v squared is your answer here. And note that these are not to the power of 1, these are prime. That's an apostrophe there and it signifies differentiation with respect to x. So in our situation, our function 2x minus 3 is at the top, u is equal to 2x minus 3, and that means u prime is, well, the minus 3 is constant, so it's dropped, and 2x differentiates to 2, and v is equal to x minus 3, so the minus 3 again is constant, so it's dropped, and v prime becomes 1. We can actually do this quite simply because of the simple functions that are on the top and bottom of this, thankfully. And you get u prime v, which is 2 times x minus 3 minus u v prime. So u is 2x minus 3 and v prime is 1. So that's not actually doing anything to the 2x minus 3. And all divided by v squared. So these x minus 3, v squared, x minus 3 squared as our denominator there. And when x is 0, as it is at the point b, then this becomes equal to 2 times minus 3 minus, well, 2x minus 3. 2x is 0, and so it's, again, minus minus 3. all over minus 3 squared. So this becomes minus 6 plus 3 divided by 9, or minus 3 divided by 9, which is equal to negative 1 over 3. And that's the gradient of the tangent, so If the gradient of the tangent is minus 1 over 3, then the gradient of the normal being the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent is equal to, well, let's take the negative of this, it's 1 over 3, and then let's take the reciprocal of this, it's 3 over 1, or just 3, which is equal to 3. And that's the gradient of the normal. Three units up for every one unit right. So since the gradient of the normal is 3, and it passes through the point 0, 1, what can we do with that information? Well, the equation of a point, of a line through a point with a given gradient is, if you have the gradient, m is equal to 
y minus y1 over x minus x1, where y and x are these arbitrary constants that, that well, arbitrary variables that denote the position of any point on that line. This actually is a form of an equation of a straight line based off the gradient equation. So that's actually really cool. And you can multiply both sides by x minus x1 to get mx minus x1 is equal to y minus y1. And again, this is still the form of the equation of a straight line, but just with some special stuff added to it. So given our y1 is 1, so this is my y minus 1, and our m is 3, and our x1 is 0, so that is nothing, we get 3x is equal to y minus 1, or y is equal to 3x plus 1. That's the equation of our normal line. And I can actually go and plot it on the graphing calculator just to confirm that that's the case. So I'm actually going to go and do that right now. And as it appears to me, visually at least, that is a correct normal for this graph. So y is equal to 3x plus 1 is a normal here. And we'll just note that down. y is equal to 3x plus 1. And finally, the last part of the question. I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, these these kind of questions to me have always been a little bit boring because it's, it's just many two to five mark related, slightly related things to do with the same graph. And it's all quite routine. There isn't much beauty to be had in these questions usually. So I hope that feedback will be heeded if anyone from the exam board is watching my videos. But anyway, the normal to C at the point B crosses the curve again at the point D. Find the X coordinate of D. And another comment about mathematical beauty um, I'm not saying that these kinds of questions are should be dropped because they're not they don't have that kind of quote unquote beauty but like I recognize that the skills developed by doing these questions are necessary to understand further areas of mathematics but I don't know I think it would be worth investigating other ways of teaching this kind of content you know yeah that that's my rant over for this video I'm just gonna get on with the question the normal to C at the point B crosses the curve again at the point D. Find the x coordinate of D. Okay, so if y is equal to 3x plus 1, and in the function above, y is also equal to 2x minus 3 divided by x minus 3, then that means this and this are equal. So what can we do? we can of course solve this equation and since it's like it looks like it's going to become a quadratic we know that there'll be two x solutions and the other x solution apart from zero will be our x coordinate of d so if 3x plus 1 is equal to or x minus 3 times 3x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 3 as I've gone and I've gone ahead and taken the first step of multiplying both sides by x minus 3 for you. Um, we can speed this along by expanding out this side here. Oh, fatal mistake. I should have put brackets around here because it's not 3x times x minus 3. It's 3x plus 1 times x minus 3. And using our FOIL, if you prefer to use this as an aid or just go on your own intuition. Um, the first terms, 3x times x becomes 3x squared. The outer terms, the x times 1 becomes x, so plus x. The inner terms, the i in foil, minus 3 times 3x is minus 9x. And last, minus 3 times plus 1 becomes minus 3. This is equal to 2x minus 3. And these minus 3s on both sides can cancel out. So 3x squared plus x minus 9x is equal to minus 8x. This is equal to 2x. And finally, 3x squared, if we subtract 2x from both sides, minus 10x is equal to 0. And we factorize x out here. 
x multiplied by 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. And how does this help us? Well, because we already uh, went over the fact that the x solution of 0 was invalid because it was the point B, we already know that it's one of the points that touches the curve. We can get rid of this and instead focus on the other factor here, 3x minus 10. So if 3x minus 10 is equal to 0, and this will lead us to our second value of x for this equation, showing how there are two points at which the lines intersect. 3x minus 10 is equal to 0, meaning 3x is equal to 10, and x is equal to 10, mi 10 divided by 3. And that's our answer. That's the other x-coordinate of the point D. So hopefully you found this video helpful to you. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. It very much helps me create new content for you. And as always, the upload schedule is that there's a new video every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 6 p.m. Hong Kong time or 10 a.m. Universal Coordinated Time, UTC. So you can check online what that means for you. But generally, it'll be the early to late afternoon in the largest countries of my viewership, which is Bangladesh, Myanmar, and Hong Kong. Thank you, thank you very much for watching. And see you next time.